Okay, so here's the deal. Everyone knows that there's a lot of good pontoons out there, but if you're looking for a pontoon that has incredible good looks, superior ride comfort, extremely well built, has sports car type handling characteristics, has an awesome interior design with multifunctional seating arrangements that's loaded with standard equipment and all at a very good value, well, odds are you're probably going to be in a Barletta. Now that's a very profound statement, I know. So come along with me and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Hi, I'm Tom from Family Marine, Wilmer, Minnesota. And um, today we're going to talk about a Barletta pontoon. This model happens to be called a Corsa. Now for those of you who are thinking that this might be a three or five minute video highlighting some of the features, well, I'm sorry. No, that's not the case with this video. And the reason is, is we get asked a lot of times, what's the difference between a Corsa and a Cabrio? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through all the features and the upgrades that the Corsa has versus a Cabrio. I'm going to explain the features, the advantages, and the benefits of each. First of all, I'm going to start on the outside, then I'm going to go to the inside, and then we're going to talk about some pricing. Okay, so starting on the outside of the pontoon, I'm going to start in the front. And one of the first things that you'll notice about this boat is this is a two-tone boat. Now, the Corsa comes standard as a monotone. The option is to upgrade to a second tone. And truth is, you can flip-flop these colors any way you want if you get a two-tone. You could have blue here, black in the middle, and blue down here. Or as this one is, is matte black with blue and matte black up on top. You'll also notice that we did the uh, blackout package. That's where they anodize the rails black, the rub rail is black, the skirting is black, and the bimini top frame is black. Now one of the things that is common with the Corsa and the Cabrio is the stainless steel corner castings. Both boats use the same corner casting. But you'll notice that the pop-up cleat on the Corsa is a nicer design, a little smoother, where this is a little bit different type of pop-up cleat. It's a little bit smaller, okay? Uh, the tubes on the Corsa are 26-inch diameter tubes, therefore giving you more buoyancy, better performance than what the standard tube on a Cabrio is, which is 25-inch diameter. Still get a lot of buoyancy and carrying capacity out of the Cabrio, but with the larger diameter tubes on the Corsa, you even get more buoyancy and uh, carrying capacity. Now you'll notice that the docking light on the Corsa is a little bit bigger than what it is on the Cabrio. And you'll notice, oh, I'm sorry, our, our docking lights are mounted up in the front on this one. The navigation lights are the same, however. And the same thing with our quick disconnect boat bumper clips. So you tie your rope to your boat bumper here. You easily snap it into place. Your boat bumper is now hanging down to protect your boat from the dock and you can easily disconnect that. There's four of these, two on each side to hang boat bumpers from. Now as we come down the side, the Corsa has a little bit different badging, very nice badging on the front. And you'll notice that the rails are shaped a little bit differently. Where with the Corsa, we have an extra rail. Instead of three rails like the Cabrio has, one, two, three, this has four, one, two, three, four, and the second tone, if you get it, is put in the middle. So it's a very, very attractive fencing on the outside. The Lusso use, utilizes the same type and style of fencing that this one has. Now, as we go back to the nose cone of the pontoon, you'll notice that Barletta always uses the heavy-duty extruded aluminum splash rails instead of sheet metal. If that were sheet metal, I can't do that. Now, the question you ask yourself is, why is that important? Well, there's two reasons why a heavy-duty splash rail is important. Number one, we see boats come into our service lot quite often with sheet metal splash guards, and they tend to get easily tore up, dinged up, bent up due to hitting the dock. And you often get sharp edges when that happens. We don't want sharp edges, especially when my children are swimming around in front of the pontoon, right? That's a safety feature. But the other thing is, <laughs> you may or may not have experienced this. 
There are times when you have too many people sitting in the front of the pontoon and you hit a big wave and the boat does a nose dive right through that wave and you end up getting water up over the bow of the pontoon. Now again, we've seen them come into our service department where the sheet metal splash fins are literally bent right up from the water pressure of that bow of the boat doing a nose dive. Well, we don't want that to happen because these splash fins are also designed that if you did do a nose dive, it will help bring the bow of the boat back up out of the water quicker, which is of course a safety feature. Okay. Now, as we go down the side of the tube, one of the things that you'll notice is we have the extruded aluminum splash guard. Uh, Barletta calls it a splash guard. It's designed to help prevent water from spraying back into the inside of the pontoon. I like it because it helps protect the side of the pontoon from damage. So if you're up against the dock, this is a little bit farther out than what the edge of the tube is, and therefore, possibly, you could hit that splash guard which is a lot stronger than what the tube is and of course you can imagine it also adds structural integrity to the tube itself above the tube we have our skirting now this one as I mentioned because it's a blackout package it's black it's extruded aluminum and runs the whole length of the pontoon okay so let's take a look at the back Okay, one of the first things that you'll notice about on the transom of the boat is this huge swim deck. Now, I gotta know, you gotta know, when Barletta calls this a 23-foot boat, Barletta measures the tube length, not the deck length, not the length overall, or LOA. They actually measure the tube length. And as you can see, our deck extends further back from the back of the boat than where the tube ends. So our deck length on this boat is actually 25 feet. And that's one of the reasons that we have this huge swim platform on the back of the boat. And people love that. Oh my gosh, we get compliments on that all the time. They, you know, they're back there getting their tubes ready to go skiing. Uh, they're putting the kids in and out of the water. Uh, you're checking the engine oil or whatever the case may be, putting your cover on. There's just a multitude of reasons why having a large swim platform on the back of the pontoon is important. So, I want to show you what we have underneath the pontoon. Okay, whether it's a twin tube or a triple tune, the Corsa is going to come standard with lifting strakes. And that's those long aluminum ribs that you see. They're dual stage lifting strakes. And what they do, of course, is help get the boat up on top of the water instead of just simply plowing through the water, which gives you better performance, better fuel economy, better handling. So the lifting strakes are standard on a two-tube or a three-tube Barletta Corsa. Also on the bottom of the boat is what's called under-deck sheeting. And that's aluminum, sheets of aluminum, that completely enclose the bottom of the pontoon. Now I'm told that you'll actually get two miles an hour better on top speed because of that under-deck sheeting, which, yeah, it makes kind of sense if you didn't have that, water could be splashing off the cross members and slowing you down. So now it's just hitting that sheet metal and it's, and it's splashing right down, not slowing you down. So standard on a Corsa is the under deck sheeting with the lifting streaks. Okay, so I mentioned cross members a minute ago. Cross members are the long eight foot wide long uh, cross channel that connects the tube and then of course the deck is mounted to the cross channel. Now, there's different styles, different types of cross members that are out there. The most common one that you see is called a C channel. It looks just like a C. Okay, so Barletta does use some C channel. In the Cabrio model, they probably use more C channel than other types. Another style that they have is called an I beam. So it looks just like an I, just like what you see here. And then the third style is called a double I beam. Now, when you upgrade from a Cabrio to a Corsa, you get a lot more double I-beam construction underneath the deck of the boat or the chassis of the boat. Why do we do that? Well, let me give you an example. On a 25-foot, this is a 23, but on a 25-foot Corsa with a triple tune, it's rated to 450 horsepower, 
Well, let me tell you, you better have a well-built chassis if you're going to put that much horsepower on the back of your pontoon. If your chassis isn't built to handle that kind of power, that kind of pounding, it's going to fall apart. So therefore, what Barletta does is they use a lot of double I-beam cross members in the construction of their pontoons. Another feature that they do is you see that black line in there? That's a piece of rubber. That's called a vibration isolation pad. And what that does is it helps eliminate some of the vibration that you might get from your motor or from pounding across the waves of going, going through the tubes and into the pontoon. So it helps reduce vibration. Now, this is what's called a saddle bracket. So there's four of these for each cross member. There's one on the outside, one on the inside, one on the outside, one on the inside. And that's how these cross members are bolted. This is welded to the tube, and then these are bolted to the cross members. One of the things I want to point out about the saddle bracket is these foot pads. You notice how these are flat spots in both these areas here. The reason that they do that is because what it does is it spreads the load on the tube. If we didn't have these foot pads, this piece of metal right here would gouge down into the tube, potentially putting a hole in the top of your tube from the waves pounding on it, right? This piece of sheet metal, I've seen it, it can, can cut right through the top of the tube. So to eliminate that, Barletta puts these big heavy duty foot pads. Makes it easier for the guys to weld too. Okay, so here we are inside the uh, 23 foot Corsa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the bow area and I'm going to talk about the features that this boat has and then we'll progress our way to the back of the pontoon. So starting up in the front, we have two very nice big chase lounges. And one of the differences between a Corsa and a Cabrio is the Corsa has the thicker, plusher, more comfortable seating. Again, not that the Cabrio is bad, it's pretty darn good, but this is even better. We still have the pop down, swing down armrests. We have in the Corsa, you'll notice how the back of the backrest is cut out. We have a couple of cup holders down in there. We have a stereo speaker in here. We have some storage in there. Over on this side, the same thing, but we also have a double USB port. So you can set your cell phone in there and charge it if you like. Now, one other thing that you'll notice different too, the contour of the seats is a little more protruded out in this area than what it is on a cabrio. Just a little bit different styling. A little bit wider bench seat up in the front. All right. Again, just like in the cabrio, the seat bases are finished off with vinyl and foam backing behind that. Again, I mentioned before that a lot of companies are leaving the seat bases with raw plastic. And although some of them had done a pretty good job, put some curves in them to make them look a little bit better, I don't know, it's still raw plastic. I just, I just really have, I really struggle with that. Okay, now, there's a couple different base colors of vinyl in the Corsa. There's a light gray, which is what we're in right now. And oh, it's funny how people look at this and they think it's white, but no, it's actually a light gray. So the X, again, back to the base color, there's two. There's a light gray and a darker gray. Not a real dark gray, but it's a darker than this. And then there's three different accent colors. You can, this one happens to be blue. There's also a red, and there's also a gray. So you can see the blue accents, the blue stitching, all through the seats of the pontoon. Okay, just like in the cabrio, we have the pop-up table. So underneath here are a couple of these legs. I won't put them both down, but you can extend the legs to the desired height, and now you've got a nice table. Uh, often people will add a second pedestal type of table, maybe in the bow of the pontoon for the gals. They like to have their own little table up front. Okay, this being a model that's called a UC, an ultra lounge with a co-pilot's chair. This is the co-pilot's chair. These are a little bit fancier than what the Cabrio is, a little thicker, a little plusher. They're very, very comfortable. They swivel, they recline, they slide back and forth, the armrests pop up and down. They are very, very comfortable seats. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention earlier 
about talking about the vinyl. The vinyl in the Corsa is a heavier duty, super thick, super strong, super stain resistant, mold and mildew resistant vinyl. Whereas the Cabrio uses a soft touch vinyl that is very nice, don't get me wrong, it's very, very nice for a Cabrio, but it is not, that is the soft touch. This is not the soft touch. Um, truth is, I kind of like this a little better because it's a little bit easier to clean. Okay, next to the passenger seat, co-pilot's chair, we've got a little console here with a couple of cup holders, a cell phone holder, a, again a dual USB jack for charging your cell phone, and below that is a storage net. Now, as I mentioned, this is an ultra lounge. So with the ultra lounge, you get a multifunctional bench seat. The way that we've got this seat set up right now, we can easily sit three adults facing forward. We can easily sit three adults facing backwards. Now, what we can also do is this flip-flop comes forward and it also lays down. All right, so the beauty of that is we can take these seats and put them in the down position. And we can take these seats and put them in the up position. Mm -hmm. So now if we wanted to lay facing forward, we can. Again, multifunctional. There's so many different seating configurations that you can have on this boat, and they all work so easily. I mean, all I gotta do is lift that thing up. What a breeze, huh? Now, I didn't mention before, this has a six speaker sound system in it, and the sound system is an upgrade from the Cabrio. It's a little better sound system. So we got two speakers up front, we have two speakers down in the Ultra Lounge, and we have two speakers out the back of the Ultra Lounge. As all Barletta's have, they come standard with a electric power bimini. Now, that's an option from most companies, and I've been surfing different boat company websites, and I've seen them priced anywhere between $1,900 and $2,800. Well, that's a standard feature on all Barletta's. Okay, down here, we also have another double USB jack so we can charge two cell phones from here. We have what I call a slow down damn it handle. <laughs> so in other words, if your wife is grabbing onto this handle and she's saying, slow down damn it, you better slow down, right? You're going too fast. Okay, so that's the Ultra Lounge. Now, when you get a two tube Corsa, the Skeeto bar is actually an option. We've added it to this one. When you get a three tube Corsa, the Skeeto bar is part of the triple tune package. Okay? So that would be standard on the triple tune. Down here is our fuel fill. Behind that is our fuel water separating filter. Now, this boat coming in with 150 horse. One of the things that Barletta does is any boat with a 115 or larger, you're going to automatically get hydraulic assist steering, which makes the boat a lot easier to steer from port to starboard as you're ripping across the lake. Okay, If you went with a 200 horse or larger, Barletta is going to automatically include power assist steering. Because when you get up into those big high horsepower motors, what happens is, there's so much right-hand steering torque created from the prop that it makes the boat extremely difficult to steer to the left. So to eliminate that steering torque, Barletta goes with either hydraulic steering or power assist steering. All right. Now, another thing that you'll notice, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is a little wider ladder. It's the same type of ladder, it's a four-step telescopic ladder, but the distance between these two grab handles is wider than that of the Cabrio series. Okay, one of the biggest feature differences between a Corsa and a Cabrio is the helm. 
and oh my gosh, this is an absolute gorgeous helm. So on the side we have a lockable glove box. Here we have an interior light. My battery isn't on right now. And down here we have our ever popular pet food tray. <laughs> I know, right? So for many of you who say, well, I'm not bringing my dog with me on my boat, that's okay. i tell you what, I don't either. That's where I put my sunglasses, my car keys, my wallet. That's a safe place to put things that I don't want getting wet and out of the sun. Perfect storage compartment for that. Although in this boat, yeah, we also have a glove box. But you know what happens with those? They get filled up with all kinds of stuff. Inside the glove box are circuit breakers for all of our accessories. Now, Barletta doesn't use fuses like a lot of companies use. We use circuit breakers. That way you don't have to pull a fuse out and put a new one in. If we have a short circuit in the wiring of the boat, that circuit breaker is going to pop out and you can push it right back in once you get the repair done, that is. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice here is that it is an elevated helm. So the driver's seat is up about four or five inches off the deck of the pontoon. Got a gorgeous mat on the floor. Now, the color of the mat is always black, but the accent in the mat is going to be either blue, red, or gray, depending on the accent of the seats that you choose. Again, this one has the blue accents in the seat, therefore the matching flooring material. Okay, moving on to the dash itself. Five position tilt wheel, very nice hand stitch steering wheel, very, very attractive. Okay, on a helm herself, um, I love these switches that they put in. As you can see, they're lighted. When our panel light switch is on, all the rest of these switch lights are on also. And this is our navigation light, so green is on, red is off. Okay, nav lights, anchor lights, all in one switch. Um, this boat doesn't have the optional floor in lighting interior, but it does have a courtesy light. A courtesy light is up underneath the bimini, so when you open up your bimini and you turn the switch on, you have a light shining down. That's standard on this boat. Over here we have our docking lights or our headlights, a couple of extra accessory switches, and our horn button. Okay, now you'll see our very nice gauges. In here we have a tachometer with a multifunction LCD screen. So we can toggle through here and we can see battery voltage, we can see our compass, and we can see our engine hours. Nice information to have. Here's our speedometer with our built-in fuel gauge and our built-in trim and tilt gauge. And then in this little slot right here is our cordless uh, cell phone charger. So all you got to do is set your phone right in there and it'll charge. Now, standard on this boat is a Lowrance Hook 5 color GPS. And we've upgraded this to the 7 inch Simrad screen. Okay, so that's what this is. This is going to tell you a plethora of information. It's going to give you speedometer, speed over ground, fuel, uh, just a, a bunch of different information. It's got your uh, GPS screen in there. We can change views. We have a bunch of different things that we can do with our touch screen. Zoom in. There's our home screen. So we got our chart. We got our echo side scan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here we have dual screens. We can have our digital depth and our GPS. So the, sim, the seven inch Simrad, yeah, it's a really nice feature to have. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have an upgraded Hertz stereo system compared with the Hertz stereo system that's in a cabriol. So the, uh, uh, the, the, the sound is a little bit better in the uh, Corsa than it is in a cabriol, although I gotta admit the cabriol has a pretty decent darn good sounding system. I'm really happy with it. Here we have a um, accessory switch, and this is a bilge pump switch. If this was a triple tune, you would have a bilge pump down inside the center of the center tube. All right, Hertz stereo. You know, you can't hear it over the video anyway. 
little pad for setting things on. Here's our control handle, forward, neutral, reverse, throttle. Down below is our safety switch, our ignition switch. And this button right here, that's to raise and lower the bimini top. Easy the, for the captain to hit that button to lift or lower the electric bimini top. And of course behind that is a uh, cup holder for the driver. All important cup holder for the driver. We also have underneath here is a jack. It's a USB and it has, it has an eighth inch jack. Now this one is hooked to the stereo. So if you wanted to listen to your music via a cord, you could plug it in there. But of course the stereo is Bluetooth, so all you gotta do is hook up your Bluetooth. And then down below that we have a little storage compartment. One of the things I wanna point out with this helm is look at the amount of leg room that I have as I'm sitting in the captain's chair. This is a feature that a lot of companies miss. Yes, I want to be able to stretch my legs out when I'm driving. I don't want to have to sit like this in order to stretch my legs out because the console comes straight down. I want to be able to sit this way and have my feet and my legs stretched out. That makes it more comfortable for me. Okay, one thing that I forgot to mention that's standard in all Barlettas is what's called the doggy dock view doors. So on the front gate and the port side gate, we have this mesh material that's covered with a clear isinglass plexiglass material, so it's nice and strong, but it's designed so that your pets can see through it. See my hand, right? Now the same thing on the port side gate. Now, like I, as I mentioned earlier, I don't bring my dog with me when I go boating. But what I find this nice for is as I'm pulling up to the dock, even though the gate is closed, I can still see the dock. When I'm next to the dock, I can see the dock through the port side gate, doggy dog view gate. I like that. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable as I'm pulling the boat up next to the dock so I'm not banging in the stuff, right? Okay, so that's a nice feature that Barletta has. I don't know of anybody else that has that. Maybe there is out there, I'm not sure. But we have it on all Barlettas for 2022. Another feature that I missed is the gate that separates from the, the cockpit of the pontoon from the stern swim platforms of the pontoon. So we have a gate here that opens and closes. And the reason that that's important is if you have little tykes and you want to make sure that they're in a safe location, you can simply close this gate. That way you know that they're not coming back on the swim platform when the boat's in motion. I think that's a very huge safety feature. Okay, underneath the ultra lounge in the rear of the bench seat is our batteries. Now they give you this nice cover to cover your batteries so you don't have uh, exposed wires coming out. Now, all courses come standard with a dual battery setup, all right? Where the cabrio comes standard with a single battery unless you get the option of the second battery setup. So a Corsa is going to have two batteries, one for starting the engine, one for operating the house, or in other words, all the accessories that are on board the boat. Now, the question is, how do you charge both batteries? Now, obviously, normally, the engine is going to charge the starting battery, right? But how do you get the second battery charged? Over on the side is a battery on-off switch, and that's a three-position switch off, battery number one, and both. So when you have a two battery set up, you always click it to both. And then just ahead of that, you'll see that little round black thing. It's about two inches in diameter, it says VSR. That is a voltage sensitive relay. Again, standard in a Corsa. Now, here's why a voltage sensitive relay is important. Let's say that you drive over to the sandbar and you started your motor, of course, off of battery number one, the, the, the starting motor battery. And you get over to the sandbar and you're there all day long and you got your music playing and you got your lights on, blah, 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 blah. And your house battery gets low in charge. How do you charge that? Without overcharging the starting battery. That's what a voltage sensitive relay does 
is it senses which of these two batteries needs the current from the alternator on the engine and sends it to the appropriate battery without overcharging and ruining the other battery. All right, we install these in a lot of boats where customers come in that have sea legs. So we hook up the sea legs to the second battery, which use a lot of amperage out of a battery, let me clue you. But they don't want to have to put a battery charger in their boat to charge that battery. So we charge it off the alternator, but we have to direct the voltage from the alternator, or amperage if you will, to the appropriate battery that needs it without overcharging the other battery, and that's what a VSR, voltage sensitive relay, does. So that's an awesome feature that comes standard with a Barletta Corsa. Okay, let's, um, let's talk about warranty for a minute. Now, the engine, of course, is warrantied through Mercury because it's a Mercury motor, and there's a three-year manufacturer's warranty against manufacturer's defects in workmanship or materials. Standard, run-of-the-mill warranty that's out there, three years. Barletta, on the other hand, is, of course, warrantied through the boat company. Now, Barletta has a couple of different warranties. First of all, they have a lifetime limited chassis warranty. Well, what is a chassis? Chassis is the floorboards down. So the wood floor that is pressure treated plywood, which does not rot. In fact, there are some states that have trouble throwing the scrap wood away because it just, as they say, it's an environmental protection agency's worst nightmare because it just doesn't go away. It doesn't rot, right? So Minnesota used to be one of those. They used to have to ship the scrap wood out of state to other states' landfills in order to throw it away because Minnesota wouldn't let them throw it in their landfills. Okay, so the pressure-treated wood, the cross members, the saddle brackets, the tubes, the keels. You know, I didn't talk about the keel. All bar letters have a solid keel. It runs all the way down from the front of the nose cone to the back of the pontoon. And it's a solid aluminum V keel. It, a lot of them are hollow in the middle. Well, Barletta uses a solid one for two reasons. Number one, it's a little stronger, right? But the other important reason is for zebra muscle. We don't want zebra muscle getting up into, into that opening of that V keel because it's going to be impossible to get them out. If you remember looking at the lifting strakes that I showed you a little bit ago underneath the bottom of the boat, the holes in the back are for us to put a hot water pressure washer up in there and spray our hot water up through that uh, lifting streak and that kills the zebra muscle. So that's how we get zebra muscle out of the, the lifting streaks. Okay, so the other portion of the warranty is the rest of the boat really, which is a 10 year limited, life, uh, t a limited warranty, 10 years. So from bow to stern on manufacturers, defects in workmanship or material, so if the stereo goes bad or the depth finder or a gauge or some stitching comes out or something happens that isn't your fault, that is a manufacturer's defect in workmanship or material, Barletta will cover that for 10 years. That's a non-depreciating transferable warranty. Okay, so that's a pretty powerful statement as to the quality of the Barlettas that they'll go so long and give you a 10-year warranty on the components of the boat, a lifetime chassis warranty. No matter what it is, if it's a Cabrio, a Corsa, or a Lusso, it has the same warranty. <laughs> Another feature I forgot to talk about was the trash can that's built into the port side chase lounge. We've got our owner's manual in there right now, but it's nice that they give you a trash can, right? With a bifolding hinge that opens up the chase lounge. Okay, one of the features that the electric bimini has is these short little arms here. These are called trailering arms. So when the bimini is down, these, the bottom of this trailer arm will sit on this aluminum fitting right here so that as you're going down the highway, the bimini top is being supported, right? It's not bouncing all over the place. It's down on the fencing of the pontoon. It's nice and solid. So yeah, to have the trailering arms is pretty important on a bimini top like that. Okay, so that kind of covers everything on the uh, Barletta Corsa. I hope that I've helped you out a lot. I hope I answered a lot of your questions as far as what the difference between a Corsa and a Cabrio is. In one of our next videos we'll be doing, we'll show you the difference between a Corsa and a Lusso, which is Barletta's top shelf model. So, 
Um, if you have any questions on the Barletta's at all, please feel free to contact us. Our phone number is area code 320-222-BOAT. That's 222-2628. You can see us on our website, which is familymarineboats.com. Or more importantly, check out our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and in the search bar across the top, type in Family Marine Wilmer, and you'll see our icon. There's about 100 videos describing all the different models that we have in the Barletta's and construction videos and we talk a lot about sea legs and horsepower and, and we hope that we can help you out and give you as much information as we possibly can because I feel that the more you're educated when it comes to a buying decision, odds are you're going to make a better buying decision and hopefully get into a Barletta. So, Thank you very much for watching and I appreciate your time.